Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. I'm Kimberly with Modern Mess Princess Ministries. We do messy life around here and messy art desks <laughs> and messy Bible journaling, messy prayers. We are doing a series um, that we've been working on for quite a while now and there's still plenty more Psalms to go. So we're gonna be keep, we're gonna keep working through the Psalms um, on Sundays, learning how to deal with emotions um, that challenge us in this life because you guys know like I do life is hard sometimes and I feel like um, there's a lot of wisdom that we can glean from the Psalms so um, I've put together a playlist of all the Sunday Psalms that we've done so far and I'll just keep adding them to that playlist so if you want to kind of go through the the list if you're new here and see what we've been doing um, you're welcome to do that and hopefully that playlist will make it a little easier for you so what I'm doing is a little bit of art and then some reflection on what I feel like that psalm has told me. I totally encourage you to read the psalm for yourself and um, put in the comments below what the psalm means to you. Uh, because something that uh, strikes a chord with you might very well strike a chord with somebody else too. And it might be something very different than what I saw in it. So as the time, at the time of this recording, we're coming up on Thanksgiving weekend. And last year I did uh, Gratitude Documented with um, Illustrated Faith on this channel. And I love it and I've got the kit. And uh, my heart though is just really set on this Sunday Psalms series right now and wanting to be consistent with that. So I used some of my um, kit stuff from Purpose Driven Essentials and some kit stuff from uh, Illustrated Faith and their kind of their take on gratitude this year, which is a little bit different than what they've done in the past. And I used some of my own art supplies, just kind of mixed it all up and um, did some art to go along with Psalm 60. So for or 61. So I want to read it to you and then um, I will show you uh, what I did for my art and um, and show you how to correct a lot of mistakes and still come up with a page that you feel semi-decent about. Like I said, I'm very messy and this page was a disaster. <laughs> about three times over. So, <laughs> Welcome to the messy club. All right, so let's read Psalm 61 together. It says, hear my cry, O God, and listen to my prayer. From the ends of the earth, I call to you and my heart is faint. Lead me to the rock that is higher than I, for you have been my refuge, a strong tower against the enemy. I get chills when I read that. Uh, and how much more did it mean to King David, who literally relied on watchtowers and high rocks and uh, places like that uh, to protect himself against the enemy. Um, but the visual, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. Um, I love I love thinking of the Lord as, as my rock um, that I can stand on. So I think that's why it hits me so hard um, in such a powerful way. For you have been my refuge, a strong tower against the enemy. Let me dwell in your tent forever. Let me take refuge under the shelter of your wings. For you, O God, have heard my vows. You have given the heritage of those who fear your name. Prolong the life of the king. May his years endure to all generations. May he be enthroned forever before God. Appoint steadfast love and faithfulness to watch over him. So I will ever sing praises to your name as I perform my vows day after day. So this is pretty cool because um, I'm just going through the Psalms fairly chronologically. We're not doing every single one of them, but I'm just kind of turning to the next one that kind of inspires me that week. And um, I really wanted to do one on gratitude and 61 ends with such gratitude that I will sing forever the praises of your name as I perform my vows day after day. David didn't, um, didn't try to pretend that life was easy. He never um, tried to pretend like um, like there weren't challenges and things that he had to struggle with in his flesh, in uh, with enemies, with um, his own temptations, obviously with his own uh, sin and humanity. But man, he goes after God like none other also. And, um, and I love that about David. He's just kind of... Uh, there's a song out 
called Reckless. I think it's called Reckless Love um, right now. And it's just, he's just a reckless lover of God. And I just love that. So um, I will turn to my art. I just thought it would be um, a really good week to focus on gratitude. And there are a lot of things, there's a lot of imagery in this Psalm that uh, is kind of gratitude based, that God is our rock, that he's been our refuge. He's a strong tower, but he's also gently tucked us under his wing. So we've got this strong fortress and we've got this gentle caretaker, like a, mom, like a mother hen who's protecting us uh, by tucking us under her wing. Um, the fact that God listens to us and he hears our vows, he hears our cries for help. He wants to set up a heritage in our name that goes on and on. He uh, wants us to be enthroned next to him, uh, seated in heavenly places, as some of the other scriptures in the Bible say. There's so much goodness in this tiny little psalm. It's one of the shorter ones. So I'd, I'd ask you to challenge yourself that no matter what you're going through that this season right now, to focus on some of the things that um, really bring you gratitude as we head into Thanksgiving this week. Okay, here comes the art part where I truly make a mess. I thought I would show you how to do art on a page where there's some bleed through um, so that you can see how I cover it up. So there's a little bit of bleed through from the last Sunday Psalm that I did where I actually dropped my stamp. <laughs> then I'm like, well, we'll just leave it there. It'll be a nice decoration. Um, so I'm using acrylic paint on this page and just honestly trying to come up with just kind of a little textured background so that as I paint around the page not only do I get kind of the fall colors I'm looking for but I also can uh, more easily cover up that little spot that I just did um, and make it look more intentional now you guys know me I'm messy I don't really care about covering up that spot necessarily but I know some people do and um, this might actually might make you think it looks even more messy but that's okay because I really like texture and uh, these fall colors ended up looking um, kind of fun together all layered on top of each other I am drying each layer of paint in between and I'm using that brush dry um, and that's how I get those kind of fun brush strokes that I thought kind of reminded me of um, both leaves and maybe like a bonfire and uh, just kind of all things fall. So I really like that dry brush technique where I just use a little bit of paint and um, a dry brush. And instead of washing the brush out in between each color, I just use a paper towel to wipe it off. And that keeps the brush dry. The brush dry? The brush dry. <laughs> I'm talking backwards now. Okay, so now I wanted to put a stamp on here that's a fun little banner stamp. I'm using a Pitt Artist brush pen to... Uh, use the color um, on it instead of a stamp pad. And I go ahead and put that down on top of the acrylic paint. And it's okay, it's kind of meh, so it doesn't show up very well. So then I'm gonna try to kind of color it in and see if I can make it darker and look better. The problem is, is um, now what I want is to be able to put a word in black over the top of this and we're just going to make a big mess here, folks. So I'm going to show you how <laughs> I'm leaving all this footage in so that you can feel good about your messes <laughs> when you have them and maybe give you some ideas on how to just roll with it. I don't get stressed out. Uh, this is the Bible. This is the word of God, but it's my heart that matters. It's not really the art that matters. And so God's not going to get upset that I made a mess of this page. He wants me to get the heart behind this page. That's my true belief. So um, if I make a mess in my Bible, I just kind of move on and use it as a metaphor for life. See, now I'm staring at it going, uh, no, okay, let's try to stamp it again. Now here's the problem. With acrylic stamps, you can usually line it back up and see what you're doing. But since it was on such a dark background, <laughs> I couldn't even do that. So now I just made it way worse. So now we're going on to another plan because I don't like this at all. So I just took some of that green paint. It's uh, the color avocado. These are all paints from Target. I used uh, avocado, blood orange, and carrot, which are three really pretty fall colors. 
Um, and I'm just making a big old blob covering up that whole mess. Now I got another mess to deal with because that big old blob doesn't look so so pretty now, does it? Oh goodness, you guys. This is if this doesn't teach you to just roll with a mess, I don't know what will. I'm just saying. Like if I can't get you to buy into just letting go and not worrying about perfection, uh oh, this page should really uh, help you feel a little bit more comfortable about making a mess in your Bible. So here's some tape, um, glitter tape from the, my Purpose Driven Essentials Kit from this month. And it's really cool because it's um, super sticky, stickier than washi tape. And so I'm just cutting off some pieces. I figured if I add in some sparkle, it'll get rid of some of the black that was showing through in the um, under the paint there. So I'm just kind of covering it up with this glitter tape because glitter makes everything better, like in my world. So um, you can't really go wrong with glitter tape, right? <laughs> so uh, I've just made a little corner there, a fun little design, trimming off the edges here um, to kind of just finish off the edge of the page. And then I realized I still need something to kind of go in that corner there where there's a big pile of green mush. So I decided to go ahead and try this one more time, but on some white paper. Um, it's just the scratch paper I was using to paint with. On one side of my acrylic block, I've got the pennant, and on the other side, I've got the word uh, grateful. So I can stamp them up and use them both really quickly that way. And I actually like the way that one turned out. And this is one of the reasons why I like using big brush pens too, instead of stamp pads, is they add texture. It's hard to get them perfect. So if you want a perfect stamp impression, use a stamp pad. But if you want texture in your stamp, like if you're using any kind of botanical anything, um, or this pennant, it was kind of fun to have texture too. You can go ahead and use um, these big brush pens um, for that. And it just turns out kind of neat. So now I go ahead and just fussy cut it, not being too particular about getting all the white off. In fact, I think the white will help it kind of stand off the page a little bit better. Um, and so I'm going to go ahead and do that thought about using tape runner and then went, Nope, I want this to stand up. So I'm using some 3M tape, um, that's 3D tape and, uh, trimming that out a little bit so it doesn't stick out over the pennant and, um, just using that to kind of raise this pennant up off the page a little bit. The, the more layers and the more texture when I start making a mess of things, um, if I keep adding to it, honestly, generally, it makes it better in my eyes because I love texture. I love layers, um, whether it's in my clothing, whether it's in my hair, my jewelry, my, my house decorating, uh, doesn't matter. I like texture and I like color and I like layers. And so um, just adding more um, for me is um, usually a good fix. <laughs> Some people really like having less is more so just paint your page over and black and write on it with a white pen and then it'll look like a chalkboard and it will be less is more um so there's an idea for those of you who don't want to make a big mess like this <laughs> it's a different kind of mess that might look more tidy so now um i highlighted some of the things that i really liked in the verse that i had talked about earlier um in the video and now i'm taking some of these illustrative faith stickers and just putting um, things down that I'm grateful for. And you can see that one that said his strength, it was too big to fit in the margin. So I went ahead and just cut it into two words, easy peasy. And um, just picking out words that are really hitting my heart this particular Thanksgiving season. So I'm really thankful for joy. Uh, there can be joy in the midst of hard times. And joy comes in interesting packages sometimes. Sometimes it's a friend sometimes it's a quiet moment at home sometimes it's when my dog starts acting like a goofball on the floor um, it just makes me laugh and um, and I find joy and I just thank God for his creation that he creates goofy little dogs like mine you know <laughs> I'm thankful for his strength when I get tired or weary I'm thankful for his mercy I'm thankful that he gives us choices and I am thankful for his grace for all of you who celebrate Thanksgiving, have a great one, and I will see you here next week. Bye-bye.